What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. So today we're back over at the new property again because I mean Kyle, the, the Florida so summer, it's yeah. not very nice to your ponds. Yeah, well overdue maintenance over here. So. Yeah, so we're gonna get in there, pull the weeds, cut the grass, mm -hmm. catch around, up the crocs. Around the crocs, around the nests as yeah. well. So let's get in there and check it out guys. So obviously, if you can see here, the weeds here quickly uh, outgrew this enclosure, especially here in summer. So what we're gonna do is, you can see the guys coming behind me, we're gonna hop on over into the enclosure, we're gonna go right to where this female's nest is, so we're gonna clear that area first, and in true Kyle Manor, uh, we don't know the, the combination is locked, so we're gonna step over. All right guys, so we're, about to, we're going in right now. The goal is, is to keep the female distracted on that side, uh, and then we're gonna clear her nest area first, so that way we can get out of that area just in case she comes back and tries to protect the nest and then we can get to work over here and we can keep her distracted away from the, the worker. All right, so now that we're pretty much wrapped up the enclosure, um, we can talk about the stuff that we've learned. Uh, the issues that we're having is with this sand and being in Florida, we get so much rain, so much sun. I mean, it's the perfect breeding ground for any weed. So that's the issue is... Yeah, if a bird flies over and drops a seed, it's yeah, gonna grow. <laughs> and obviously all this, like even this, you know, once this falls apart, this is essentially nutrients. So once that falls to the ground, then the plants can feed off of that too. Uh, even though this is six inches deep of sand, you know, we're finding even the rocks over there, the, the pathways we're finding that weeds are growing on top of that. So it's really like, no matter how thick you make it, you can't really just get rid grow of it. on top. Yeah, so what we can do is one of two things. Either we set up a maintenance plan where we have to come in two weeks or a month, every month. Yeah. So what we're doing is now that we cleaned it out, we're gonna put a timestamp on it and see how long it takes for it to start to look cruddy again um, and then we can determine because obviously right now is the peak of everything growing so obviously in the winter we probably would only need to touch this once or twice but in the summer probably every two weeks to a month yeah I'd say probably every two weeks this stuff grows so quick even yeah. the grass over at the other property like you cut it and then the next day it's already grown two inches yeah which is crazy so that's one plan again we'll see where we're at um, I'd hate to have it every two weeks Hit the head every two What's weeks. What's in your pocket, Kyle? Nothing. He's over there. Oh. <laughs> he jumped out of my pocket. <laughs> this guy hopped in here, so I wanted to get him out. That's actually a really pretty toad. Yeah. yeah. So I'll keep him in my pocket. And then once we're done here, I'll take him back out. Yeah, so you, obviously the, the male Nile is still sitting right here. He's been a good boy, just hanging out. Uh, and honestly, if the female didn't have eggs, she'd probably do the same thing. She would. She would. So there's... Let's walk over there and show them that eggs. Come on, and buddy. He doesn't want to stay in my pocket. <laughs> so, yeah. So, one option is, is we set up a maintenance plan for this. Or the second option is we try that zoysia grass like we're trying at the other place. And that doesn't grow. Yeah, it doesn't grow thick. And then just coat the whole thing with this. Rip all this grass out because this grass is uh, very, very long. You know, obviously when we built this, we thought... I thought I knew exactly what to do and what's what, but always learning. So that's an easy fix. The not so easy fix is the shallow section and cave that I built, I don't think is really getting utilized. Now we're going to be moving saltwater crocodiles over here, alligator over here, um, that will help us determine if it's working. Um, but if it's not, then we'll rip it out and build a shallow section like we did at the old property, or the sanctuary, and then with the shallow sections too, or the ramps, we'll rip them out and do um, sandy pathways too. So what it is, is we test this up here, found out we didn't, what doesn't work there or here, what doesn't work here, trying it over there. And if it works over there, we'll put it back over here. It's evolving and that's the biggest thing is, you know, 
I love these enclosures, but they costed a bloody fortune. And I actually like the newer, new enclosures at the sanctuary more, just because they're much more naturalistic. Um, we don't need to rip this whole thing out because that would be a huge undertaking, but we can all we can implement things here to make it far more natural. And I think that's the key is to take these ramps out, take the shallow section out and make it all sand. So one other thing that I found with these enclosures is I set up this giant drain system. Uh, whenever it rains or just cleaning, just overflowing the water, um, it'll just spill out over here. But guys, I mean, again, with the grass, this was embedded on top of here so again this is kind of like a little beaver per se just slowly clogging up and damming this entire system which will make the pond overflow and just fill out everywhere so we found another point that definitely needs maintenance so you can see right here on this corner it's exactly what it looked like so what it does is it just comes through those and roots are also, strong also goes you can see all the roots go down in to the drain itself so even with this massive drain, there's still maintenance. So that's what we're learning is we're learning now that it's thrown to the elements of Florida, we're learning exactly what kind of maintenance this property requires and what we need to touch up on and what we can perfect to make this, this these enclosures the best they can be for the crocs. So grass is cut, the sand is cleaned, the female Nile is over by the nest, so she is happy. We talked about the shallow section, which is, I guess, the cave too. Um, but with that, you know, taking that out and just making a shallow section, they don't seem to use a cave. Talked about that. Talked about the ramps, making them sand. One more thing I'd like to add just to finish this off, and that's a wallow over here. I talked about it before we did it, but I got to the point where I was like, okay, let's just get this done. Let's just get it done. Let's move the crocodiles. But once we're done the sanctuary, then we'll come back here and we'll build two massive enclosures over there that the salties are going to go in. Um, but this area would be a nice little area for a wallet. So just probably most likely just dig a hole, put them in it, or just do shallow sheet pile. Like so, two footers? Yeah, so what it is is we'll dry it up in the winter so they can't go in it. Um, or we run another feed line. The problem is we gotta run to the drain. It's a lot of work. So we could just wallow it out and just make another separate section. Because again, the guys, I always see the benefit of having separate areas that the crocs can get away to if they want to um, and this has always been that talk of having this area be a wallow and once we get everything done over the sanctuary once we come back here to finish these enclosures then we'll renovate these enclosures after only being done a year so typical kyle fashion just renovating and renovating but the goal is perfection the goal is for the best enclosures for these animals and we are damn close over here and just a little bit more renovations to these enclosures and i'll say they're perfect all right guys well that wraps up a new facility clean out yeah well, hope you guys enjoy a little bit of maintenance we're gonna go and finish the other ponds i'll put some b-roll at the end so you can see them completely done uh, but if you did like today's video make sure to like comment subscribe follow us on instagram primitive predators as far as 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 well as patreon and i'm gonna ask you for something new guys if you like this video or any of the other videos Give us a share. Put us on your Facebook, Instagram. Just, just share us around. Feel free to throw it out there uh, and get some more people, uh, some eyes to the channel seeing these amazing crocodiles. We'll see you in the next one. See you guys.